Welcome to my second Beetle Blocks tutorial. This time we're going to make a peer pendant or an earring design by moving the beetle around and using the extrusion blocks. I like to start with the, when the flag is clicked and a reset. This ensures our code behaves as we expect each time we start, resets everything. Now for fun, let's change the color of the object we are creating. Click on colors, grab that first block, set hue to, click in that colored square, and let's choose something like pink. Great. This color selection is not related to the 3D print that you will get at the end. That is solely depends on the filament color that's loaded in your 3D printer. This will just make the beetle um, display a pink object for us. It's just for fun. Okay, so let's go to shapes and start extruding. So down at the bottom below the shapes are these drawing blocks and then the start extruding and stop extruding and then the set extrusion diameter and change. You need to set the extrusion diameter first and the block here is saying one, this is in millimeters, one millimeter is pretty fine and can result in like a flexible earring. So let's set ours to three. It's a little bit thicker. Two and a half might be, I'm going to change that. Let's make it two and a half. Two and a half millimeters. That makes a nice, delicate earring. Okay, next we want to start extruding. Start extruding curves. You have an option of curves and lines. Lines seem to make a little bit of a smaller file that's easier to load and easier to display on the screen. So we're going to do that. Now as the beetle moves around, it will extrude a little tube behind it, and this will be our model. So now we need to get the beetle moving. I like to make like a squiggle and then repeat the squiggle in a different direction and then have um, sort of a spirographic design. So let's start with just moving it maybe in a straight line, and then we'll make it curve. So let's move it about five. All right, there's our first line and it's nice pink color, a little tube of toothpaste. Okay, so now to make a curve, we're going to use the repeat block. We're gonna move a little bit and turn a little bit. So here's repeat 10. Back to the motion. I'm going to move a little bit and then I'm going to rotate in the Z axis. This keeps everything flat. One thing you want to make sure of is that you're making a design that's going to stick to your 3D printer at the bottom. It doesn't have a lot of bridges or overhangs. If it doesn't stick, you won't be able to get a good print. Um, you can add things to help it, like supports, but sometimes these can be difficult to remove. It's kind of nice to make a nice clean print to start off with. Okay, so move one rotate by, let's make that a little bit bigger, a little faster, tighter curve. Okay, that's kind of a big curve, so I'm going to make it move just maybe a half a millimeter, and I want to turn a little bit more, so it makes like a little bit more of an S. Oh, that's very nice, and you can play with these as long as you want. So now that we've got this kind of curve, maybe I want to make an S curve that goes the other way, so that might be kind of cool, an extra part of my squiggle. To make the S curve, to make it go the other way, I can use this exact same code here with the repeat. If I right click on the top of repeat, I can duplicate my code, connect it underneath. Now I want it to turn the opposite direction. So instead of rotating Z by 20, I want to rotate by the opposite of 20. And the opposite of 20 is negative 20. All right, let's click and see what we got. Ooh, I like that. So it kind of goes out, and there's my little squiggle. Hmm, that's pretty nice, but I think what I want is just the S-curve. So let me put this straight part between the two S-curves. So I'm going to separate my two repeats and put the move in between and put them back together. Now it should turn first part of the S, make a straight line, and then second part of the S. Let's see if that code does what I think it's going to do. Oh, look at that. So curve, straight part, and then curve again. All right. 
This is getting a pretty long list of code, and what I want to do now is take this S and have it draw it over and over and over again. Sort of make a spirograph with my beetle. This is pretty long about a code, and if I add some more code, it might be complicated. So now that I've got this, I think I'm going to make this into my own block, make a function out of this. So click on My Blocks and make a block. I'm going to call it Squig. And it's just a command. So when I give the command Squig, press OK, it's going to do all of this code. It's going to make that first S. It's going to move straight, and it's going to make that second half of the S. So I'm going to take all that code and stick it under the squig. So my command block says when I say the word command squig, it'll do all of this. Hit apply and press OK. And now I've got a squig block. So let's see if I add my squig block under my other two things and click. So I didn't change anything, so that's good. Now I want to take that squiggle and do it multiple times. So I'm going back to my repeat block. I'm going to put it inside, we'll put squig inside repeat. All right, let's see what we get. Okay, so it's making a squiggle 10 times, but it's just doing it in a straight line. Well, that might be an interesting earring. You just put a little hook at the top and it goes. But I think I want sort of a circle design. So I need to rotate it, make a squig, and then rotate. So back to my motion blocks, rotate Z. And here I think I'm going to rotate by a bigger number, maybe 30 degrees. See what we get. Okay, so it was rotating by 30 degrees, didn't quite make it around. I can either increase the rotation or I can repeat a couple more times. So let's try repeating 12 times. Oh, and it wraps back around on itself. And it looks like this little Z point right there, that's where my little beetle is. So it went right back around and makes a nice, wrap back a nice pendant. I think I like that. Okay, so you could just print this now, but we might want a hook at the top that a jewelry finding could fit in, like an earring wire or a jump ring or something. So we're gonna add that next. So let's stop extruding. So let's go back to our shapes. And we're gonna stop extruding because we're done with that part. And we're gonna add a little tube at the edge. And the tube needs to be the same length as the extruding diameter because we want it to be flat on the bottom so it prints just a nice. So our extruding diameter is two and a half, so we're going to change the tube length to two and a half. And I found that works well with standard earring finders is if the outer diameter of the tube is three and a half millimeters, and that the inner diameter is two, two, or two point three millimeters, that seems to make a pretty good tube. So we've stopped extruding and we're going to draw a tube. So let's see what happens. All right, so if you look, there's our tube. It kind of drew it right in the middle. So we're going to actually have to tell the beetle to move up to about here, which I think is in the Y direction. Do you see that little Y line? So we need to move it into the Y direction up here. So that's attached, but that is not drawing on top of our tube. So let's go to the motion blocks. And we're going to use the go to, and then we'll put that in between. So it's going to stop extruding, and then we're going to make the beetle jump, or go to something in the Y. And you can probably calculate. This is on the zero, and it's one, two, three, four, maybe four. All right, let's try that. Oh, yeah, so that's connected. Now it's sideways. So I need to rotate the tube so that it's perpendicular. Although you could print it that way if you're making a necklace and you wanted the line to go through it. That might be nice. Um, but I'm going to rotate it. And this time I need to rotate it around the y-axis by 90. So change this to y. Change this to 90. Now I should have a tube right on the end. All right, so it looks like my extrusion 
is covering up some of the hole in my tube that might interfere with me putting the metal findings in there. So I need to move it a little farther along the Y. Let's try four and a half. Hmm, I'm gonna try a little bit more. Let's see if five, five might be too much. Oh no, look, five, you gotta look closely. It's just attached, there's a little bit of the extrusion in there. We've got a nice flat object that we can print that'll print really nicely. All right, so there it is. Doesn't look too big. This grid right here is about 20 across, so we've got a 20 millimeter earring with a nice tube. So that's probably an earring. If you wanted a pendant, you'd want it a little bit bigger. And we would just adjust our numbers, maybe make a squig a little bit bigger. All right. So for this to print, we need to download the 3D model. So you go up to the file and you go download my 3D model as an STL. That's the file that you can send to the slicer and to the printer. And it's downloaded. <clears throat> so save this code up here and you can come back to it and make some adjustments. You can make a second squiggle. I've made some other squiggles like this design that's kind of a bigger design it just needs the tube at the end but it's a whole new look just with repeat and rotate in the x and y plane what about this one i have this one Ooh, the sort of a flower this green one a smaller flower and that one's sort of a star diamond kind of squiggle so Play around with this idea and see and come up with your own earring or pendant design. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you.